hello students good morning today i am going to start chapter 10 king merchants and pilgrims second part now our topic is kingdoms of north and northwest now what is it students i told you in earlier video about the sangam literature i think you all have remembered about the sangam literature the sangam literature give us information about the three famous dynasties about the chola pandyas and cheras the whole detail we can get easily in sangam literature now we are going to study about the kingdoms of north and northwest in this student while the sangam literature was being written in the south many tribes especially from central asia had crossed the hindu kush and entered india taking advantage of the absence of a strong kingdom after the decline of the mauryans who were they these were the indo greek or the bactrian greek the sakhas or sinthias the pahavlas prathirans and the kushans they were known as indo greek rulers or greek rulers these tribes invaded india from the northwest through the khyber and bolan passes they occupied parts of punjab sindh rajasthan and present day afghanistan and pakistan most of the kings who established their kingdom in these parts they were adherents of buddhism and played a vital role in the expansion and propagation of buddhism now dermeterus who was he he was the indo greek ruler the bactrians originally under seleucus the greek general of alexander do you remember seleucus In earlier chapter also we have studied about Seleucus he was the Greek general of Alexander he declared independence by 300 BCE in 2nd century BCE Bactrians under Dermeterus occupied territories up to Punjab the most famous Bactrian ruler was Menander The most famous Indo, uh, Indo Greek ruler was Menander. He was also known as Melinda, who converted to Buddhism under the influence of the Buddhist monk Nagasena. A book called Melinda Panha contains a dialogue between Menander and Nagasena. The Indo Greek issued coins having inscription in both Greek and Karahosti script. Mindo was the most powerful Indo-Greek ruler. He ruled over a vast area from Afghanistan to Mathura from 155 BCE to 130 BCE. Melinda was converted to Buddhism by a Buddhist philosopher. In the Buddhist texts, Melinda Panha is an important source of information about him. the indo greek rulers had a great impact on india now the pahlavas dynasty understand student you can understand by map easily you can understand by map that pahlavas dynasty flourished in which part in india pahlavas they were also a tribe from central asia they came from central asia and in the 1st century ce they occupied a large portion of the northwest including the region around gandhara they made gandhara their capital the most powerful pallava ruler was gando parents he rule extended up to south afghanistan the pratihan rule was very brief later the kushanas who came from the present day tajikistan defeated them and took over and ruled their territories 
the kushana umpires now the students the kushana umpires they established themselves at takshila and peshawar after defeating the indo greeks the pallavas and the shakhas later on they occupied the whole of kashmir and punjab and parts of present day rajasthan and uttar pradesh the kushans were nomadic tribe of northwest china or tajikistan they were driven out of their homeland by the huns huns were also a tribal as a result they moved eastwards and arrived in afghanistan in the first century ce the kushanas were very dynamic like the indo greek prathians and shakhas the kushans adapted well to the indian climate and made this country their home they followed buddhism and spread indian culture to west and central asia students the kushanas had two capitals one in purushapura near modern peshawar and the second at mathura the kushanas encouraged india straight with central asia and gained control over silk route which was the most important trade route the rule of kushanas was at its glory during the rule of kanishk he marked ad 78 the year he came to the throne as the beginning of a new era called the sakha era the sakha calendar started by him is officially followed by the indian government he also issued a large number of gold coins kanish was a great patron of art the mathura school of art a new style of art flourished during the region of kanishk it was indian both in spirit and style images of buddh and bodhisattvas were made in indian style the headless statue of kanishk is an example of mathura school of art in the mathura school of art buddh was depicted with a shaven head he was a great patron of buddhism he sent buddhist missionaries to central asia china and southeast asia to spread buddhism he organized the fourth buddhist council in kashmir to discuss important issues of buddhism during the period of kanishk the kushana empire flourished in many parts of india and he made good relations with foreign countries also student art during the region of kushanas kanishk flourished the mathura school of art which was a new stool a new style of art it was started by indo greek rulers and du- during the kushanas dynasty this art was flourished in many parts of of the country it was indian both in spirit and style images of buddha and bodhisattvas were made in indian style the headless statue of kanishk is an example of mathura school of art in the mathura school of art buddha was depicted with a shaven head he was a great patron of buddhism he sent buddhist missionaries to central asia china and southeast asia to spread buddhism he organized the fourth buddhist council in kashmir to discuss important issues of buddhism main kushana rulers in kushana rulers main was kanishk kanishk was the second great kushana emperor who started shakha year in 78 ad kanishk ruled for 20 year and his rule is recorded as far south as sanchi where several inscription in his name have been found Kanish rule was a period of retrenchment consideration for the empire in particular he devoted time and effort early in his region to the exertion of greater control over the city of mathura 
now trade students during the region of kanishk trade flourished during this period he had harmonious trade relation with west asia takshila mathura and ujjain and these were the important trading centers also a large number of gold silver and copper coins were issued by the indo greek and the kushans this encouraged trade the development of new crafts also promoted trade kanishk established the silk route which proved to be a connection between the east and the west this was the most important trade route at that time from china it ran across central asia and ended at the west asia provinces of the roman empire through this route india exported many items such as pearls silk ivory and precious stones glass copper tin and gold now religion hinduism and buddhism were popular in this period buddhism was divided into two sect hinayana and mahayana hinayana was the old and simple form of buddhism mahayana was the new variant with many rituals and ceremonials kanish was responsible for the reformed school of mahayana buddhism he sent missionaries who traveled long distances to the silk road and they spread buddhism in central asia and china despite being a devout buddhist kanish was tol- tolerant towards other religions he supported and allowed them to exist many other rulers accepted hindus and became worshippers of either lord vishnu or lord shiva sakhas the sakhas were a nomadic people from central asia they defeated the indo greek and came through the hindu kush mountains in the 1st century ce they settled down in western india and gradually spread all over the region rudraman first was the most popular sakha ruler in 130 to 150 ce he annexed gujarat sindh surwastha and north konkan his capital was ujjain rudraman first used titles like maharaja great king and maharaja dhiraj king of kings he was in conflict with the kushans in the north and the satavanas in the deccan during the sakha ruler the satrap system of government was introduced Under this system the empire was divided into provinces each province was ruled by a military commander who was called a satrap these commanders were independent rulers of their provinces some even issued their own coins students uh, the governor of ujjain rudraman during the 130 ce to 150 ce he was the most prominent sakha ruler please all of you remember this now what were the impact of foreign inventions the inventions from the northwest had a great impact on india each group of invaders brought with them their own culture this in turn brought about changes in the indian way of life these inventions led to the development of trade india's trade with central asia improved the taxes collected from the foreign traders passing through their territory made the indian rulers prosperous The Shakhas and the Kushans introduced the use of horses in India. This further led to the use of helmet, riding boots and cap. The art of this period was greatly influenced by the Gandhara school of art also. 
though the theme of the art was buddhist it was greco roman in style then the demand for indian products like paper spices pearls precious stones fine muslins perfumes ivory and tortoise shell increased and india started exporting them to other countries the india learned the art of coin making from the greeks they learned to make molds to give shape to the coins they also learned to give the portraits and name of the kings on the coins our knowledge of medicines improved the greek or the yunani system of medicines is in practice in india even today the remains of a large number of buddhist stupas and monasteries in central asia proved the spread of buddhism in central asia by the indian art and rulers these invaders gradually mingled with the indian society and the spread of buddhism this is the last topic of this chapter buddhism under the royal patronage of the maurya spread throughout the magadha kingdom from east to west ashoka sent missionaries to far off places through the royal highway built during that period students during this period buddhism spread in many parts of the world by these rulers ashoka connected many ashoka dynasty connected in indian territories like patliputra mathura takshila with central asia china iraq and rome in northwest india takshila was an established religious center religious preachers spread the teaching of the buddh up to gandhara and then to central asia afghanistan became an important center of buddhism Various monasteries, stupas, and colossal statues of the Buddha are testimony to the importance of Buddhism. The region of Bactria and Gandhara also came under Buddhist influence. Emperor Kanishka also set up two religious centers at Gandhara and Mathura, and sent missionaries to China, Tibet, Korea, Japan, and other distant places. these missionaries introduced mahayana buddhism abroad for the spread of buddhism to central asia and china the silk route acted as the many main artery pilgrims and missionaries from india traveled to china and central asia through this route emperor kanishka sent kumara jiva a monk to china to spread buddhism The accounts left by the ancient traveler provided valuable evidence on Buddhism. Some of the Chinese pilgrims who came to India were Fayan, Hengshang, and Aisting. They recorded their experience in their travelogues. During the reign of Kanishka Mahayana, Buddhism came to prominence. During the reign of Harshvardhan, there was a regular exchange of pilgrim between India and China. one another silk route developed during this period which was silk route it was established by the chinese emperor in 1st century bc is one of the oldest trade routes in this world silk was discovered in china around 2700 bce the rich glossy colors and a smooth texture made a silk a highly desirable fabric in most countries Sometimes Chinese rulers sent gifts of silk to rulers in Iran and West Asia and from there the knowledge of silk spread further west. About 2000 years ago wearing silk became the fashion among guest rulers and rich people in Rome. It was in great demand in Europe especially in Rome. However the Chinese kept the art of silk making a closely guarded secret because it could be sold in those countries at a very high price the chinese traders traveled even to west asia and roman empire carrying silk on horseback or camels along dangerous roads through mountain and deserts 
a land route taken by traders and travelers from China to Rome through Central Asia, Afghanistan and West China came to be known as Silk Route. It connected many parts in China with the Mediterranean Sea. Buddhism also spread during this route. It also spread to the countries of Southeast Asia. In order to spread Buddhism, Ashoka sent his son Mahendra and daughter Sangmit to Sri Lanka. Ashok also sent his official to Java, Sumit, Sumatra, Vietnam, Thailand and Cambodia to preach Buddhist ideals. The greatest stupa at Borodwar is in Java is dedicated to the Buddha. The strong Buddhist influence resulted in many changes in these foreign lands. Today, Buddhism is a popular re religion in Central and Southeast Asia. During this period, many parts they flourished Buddhism. Friends, thank you.